angels. There are thought to be nine different ranks. So let's go over a few of the things in case you haven't never really checked into it. We'll start with the seraphim. There's no concrete biblical proof of the exact ranking order or the importance. But they're one of the ranks of the angels in the celestial hierarchy spoken of in Hebrews 12.22 and they are indefinite in their number. The Sifarim title is applied to those angels assigned to God's altar and are concerned with the holiness of God. They relate to sacrifice and cleansing. Described as having six wings with two to cover his face, two covering his feet, and two to fly. And they continually sing, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. They are around the throne of God, and they sing without ceasing, day and night. They give glory and honor and thanks to the Lord God who sits on the throne and lives forever and ever. And then you have a little deal. Here you are, we already knew we were warned not to worship them. Let no man defraud your reward by delighting in false humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, found in Colossians. We'll go to the cherubim. Cherubim, however you'd like to pronounce that. Now you do have uh, virtues where you see they're falsely suggested and we'll get to that here in a minute. These cherubim are attached to the throne of God as a protective barrier to guard His holiness into the Garden of Eden to guard the Tree of Life. They are described as living creatures. Everyone has four faces four wings. Their feet are straight feet and the sole of their feet are like the sole of a calf's foot. Sparkled like the color of burnished brass. They have the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. Their wings are joined one to another. They do not turn when they go. They all go straight forward and do not turn. The face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side and the face of an ox and an eagle on the left. The sound of their wings can be heard. Their whole body and their backs and their hands and their wings are full of eyes round about. They were the guardians of paradise. They are. <clears throat> they, they are the guardians of it. They're stationed at the east of the Garden of Eden and the flaming sword which turned in every direction to guard the way to the Tree of Life. And we have no Eden anymore. But they were the guard of it, apparently. The Ark of the Testimony has two cherubims of gold of beaten work on them and the two ends of the mercy seat. One cherub is on one end and the other cherub is on the other end. The cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings. Their faces shall look one to another toward the mercy seat. And then you come, you can find uh, decorative elements. Talk a little bit about King Solomon, the temple. And read this last passage here. The glory of the Lord God of Israel was gone up from the Sherub. Ezekiel witnessed the departure of the Lord's glory from the temple. The glory went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the temple. The glory of the Lord departed from off the threshold of the temple and stood over the cherubim. The cherubim lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in the sight of Ezekiel. So we'll go with, uh, we'll do the archangels next. Everybody's heard of an archangel. Everybody's heard of a guardian angel. And this is the website guidedbiblestudies.com And you can come here and 
you can read these definitions for yourselves and then follow up on any research you want to do to verify. Archangel is described as a chief angel to be first in a political reign or power, reign, rule over, and from number 32 to bring tidings, a messenger, celestial beings, and intermediaries between God and man. It is an archangel who has the trump of God, can be heard when the Lord himself descends from heaven with a shout. That is when the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then those who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so we shall always be with the Lord. They are usually not mentioned by name, however, the few that have been revealed, and you've heard of Michael. Travolta even made a C-rated movie about that. He is defined as the great prince who stands for the children of Israel during the time of trouble such as never was since Israel was a nation. It is the time when the people of Israel shall be delivered, those that are found written in the book. And a war in heaven takes place where Michael and his angels fight against the dragon and his angels. Notice it didn't say snake. The great dragon is cast out, that old serpent, but still does not say snake. Called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world into the earth along with the angels. And then uh, Uriel, the fire of God. This other angel is only named in these passages. States a human mind cannot understand the ways of God. A man already worn down by this corrupt world cannot understand the ways of the incorruptible God. He also speaks of the day of judgment. He was sent to the prophet Ezra of the tribe of Levi to answer his prayers. And then you have Raphael. He told Tobit it is better to pray sincerely and please God by helping the poor than to be rich and dishonest. Better to give to the poor than to store up your gold. Such generosity will save you from death and wash away your sins. Those who give to the poor will live full lives, but those who live a life of sin and wickedness are their own worst enemies. He also told men to praise God and tell everyone about the good things he has done for them. So men will honor God and sing his praises. Never stop praising God. It's good to keep a king's secret, but what God does should be told to everyone. Raphael is one who brings prayers into the glorious presence of God. God sent Raphael to test Tobit as well as to cure and rescue. Raphael is one of the seven angels who stand in the glorious presence of the Lord, ready to serve him. His name means God has healed. Remiel. And he's probably, is what it says, the archangel Jeremiel. <clears throat> we are warned, of course. They continue to give you this little warning here not to not to worship the angels but john saw the prophecy of the book of revelations and after which he saw and heard all that he was permitted he fell down to worship before the feet of an angel which had showed him all these things and the angels told him not to bow down he was a fellow servant and a brother of the prophets he should worship god and you're you're warned not to get caught worshiping and serving the sun the moon the stars or the host of heavens, which are angels. This is an abomination. Anyone worshiping the sun, moon, stars, or the host of heavens, which would be angels, shall be stoned till they die. So we, how, how about we go to uh, guardian angels? This is something that it, it is saying that has been suggested by the Catholic Church. The term is a traditional term from that church and the catechism is recorded in the angels in the life of the church. Catholic believers use Matthew 
the verse there. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. He also cites Psalm. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt not tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under your under feet. If an example of a guardian angel is one who gives advice or delivers a message, then there are a number of biblical examples of what could be understood as the role of the guardian angels. They're not mentioned specifically in the Bible. And then you have different passages here of where they've came and done things, delivered messages. But yet they say that was uh, mainly in Catholic belief. I personally believe there are. How about we'll go with principalities very quickly. And then there are two left you can check on if you want. Thrones and uh, Dominions, I believe it were. Now the seraphim, the cherubim, and archangels are identified in the word with such detail that we can reliably know of their characteristics and duties and be somewhat assured of their responsibilities and rankings, not as certain about thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, virtues, and guardians. <clears throat> their ranks of angels, according to Colossians, uh, the scripture suggests there is both a visible and established government on earth consisting of thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers. And there is an invisible but just as established government in heaven consisting of the same types of administration. With this interpretation, the ranks of thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers for some of the angels in heaven can be established for general attributes assigned. If you examine and compare the seen governments established by God on earth, then we can easily imagine the unseen government of angels to have the same characteristics as known. You can't be certain of it, because the Word of God does not reveal knowledge of these things to us in great detail. We're told lest any man spoil us through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Jesus Christ dwells in all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We are complete in Christ, and Jesus Christ is the head of all principality and powers. So I hope this has uh, spurred something to where you want to know a little more about angels. Because you have heard me say many times about the watchers <clears throat> things I've told you showed you about fallen angels they are real and this is a list of uh, nine different ranks of the good angels there's two different kinds the ones that stayed good the ones that turned the ones that turn seek to deceive you every day of your life. So, check it out. Do your homework. Understand. Gain knowledge. Know the truth. God bless every one of you. Keep you safe. Put on the armor of God. Shield yourself from the evil. Live it in your heart. Live it in your everyday life. I'll speak to y'all soon. Have a good week.